Hi, it's Troy at the Full Setup here, back with another video for you today. And today I'm going to talk about overclocking on my Asus B350 Plus motherboard. This is the Prime Plus from Asus. Now, a lot of people have been asking me for this video for the last few weeks. I know a lot of people just wanted to see the BIOS a little bit more, which we're going to show you later. Sorry it's taken me a while, but again, because of BIOS, I was waiting for a few more BIOS updates, just so everything was a bit more stable. Now, I'm still using my Hyper T4 for my 3.8 gigahertz overclock that I'm going to show you today. Um, with 2-bit bit for next spectrum pros keeping it cool enough but i am having to have the fans going full rpm when i'm doing video editing also for the ram we've got um 16 32 gigabytes of gddr4 cosair um that's the LP lpx ram now this is single rank ram but because i've got four slots um well four dims in here i'm not able to do too much overclocking which i'll show you in a bit we've also got an msi gtx 1070 as well um overall been really actually quite happy with this motherboard it's only got a six phase power which you can't see up at the top which is why i've gone for a 3.8 gigahertz not four even though that i've had four stable now before i show you the bios i just want to show you a few little things that i use in regards to when I overclock, this is testing that you're going to need to run after you've set your overclock. Most importantly, these two red um, windows you're seeing here, this is OCCT um, overclocking software. You want to download this and you want to go to the CPU Lin pack. Sorry, this might be a bit hard for you to see. Um, you want to set your memory to 25% because you don't want to stress your memory out at first. You want to make sure your cores are all good. Um, and then you want to make sure ABX is tipped as well. Then I've also got um, Asus um, AI Suite just for watching temperatures as well as hardware monitor up here. Now you need the latest version of hardware monitor as well installed. Um, so you can see the temperatures with Ryzen. And then generally what I'll do is when I stress test as well, go into Fan Expert and just set everything to full speed. So there we go, that's how I test it. Now obviously you do overclocking at your own risk as well. I'm just gonna show you a few little bits and bobs, mainly just the BIOS, because that's what everyone keeps asking me, and I hope this will really help you out, because it hasn't been the easiest overclocker. Right, let's get into BIOS then. So just gonna restart the PC. And then you wanna be smashing the delete key. I am a basher, I'm not a holder, I'm a basher. Sorry. Um, massive apologies. I have got a cold as well at the moment. <laughs> I've wanted to do this video about a week ago. And now I'm getting really busy up until I'm going to have Ryzen 5 CPUs out on the, um, April the 11th. So if you want to see videos on that, I think I'm going to get the Ryzen 1400 because they all seem to overclock to near enough the same. I did also forget to mention as well, before you do any overclocking, you're going to want to go and download the latest BIOS um, from Asus. Out of the box, this didn't actually have options for me to set different overclocking. One of the newest BIOSes as well, um, it help, means you can change the SMT, you can turn that off and stuff. So make sure you've downloaded that. So anyway, here we are, we're in the BIOS. As you can see, I've got my Ryzen processor. Why am I doing that when I've got a mouse? Speed's running at 3 gigahertz. We've got my four RAMs. RAM dims in there, so what we need to do is we need to go over to advanced mode. Um, let's show you a few little things in here. Once you've done your overclock, you can save it in a profile, so you can see I've got a 3.8 gigahertz profile in there. Um, there's a few advanced things as well that have been added on the newer BIOS updates. I'm just going to show you this before overclocking, so you go, you can turn SMT off. Um, you can also turn some cores off as well. Um, so that's how everyone's been doing the sort of synthesized Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3. Apologies, I just had a massive coughing fit. So here we are in the AI tweaker. Now the first thing you can see is AI overclock tuner. Now this is to set the memory um, to the DOCP, basically AMD's version of XMP. Now you don't want to be using this for now. What you want to do is get a stable overclock on your CPU, then you can set RAM later. I actually physically can't use it because, because I'm using four RAM um, DIMM slots because I want 32 gigabytes of RAM for video editing. I'm actually limited to 2133 anyway. I'm going to come back with a whole video using various memory kits in this motherboard probably in a week. I'm just waiting for the memory to um, be delivered. So we'll just sort of get over this as quick as we can on the memory. So the memory frequency, you basically, for overclocking, before you start to tweak it up, you just want to set it to 2133. That's what all DDR4 runs at. It's like its lowest setting. To set that to 2133, and then you should be fine for overclocking. The next thing you can see is here we've got custom CPU core ratio. Now this is where you a uh, you can adjust your multiplier. So you so you've got 100 megahertz. 
Um, uh, currently, it's at 30 because we've got... I don't know why I'm using my hand. Because we've got 3,000. I want 3.8. So, I come here to CPU core ratio and set that to 38. Easy, hey? Overclock tuner. Don't want to use that. That basically just automatically overclocks the um, CPU, which just overclocks it to 3.3 gigahertz. So, that's nothing really to be noticing about also as soon as you set the cpu core ratio as well it disables turbo boost anything like that there's also a performance bias as well so if you want it to perform better for cinebench and things like that but we can leave that to auto digi plus vram we're going to come back to in a minute because i know the thing you're going to want to know about most is voltage moving on to the voltage section of the video then well there's already a lot of people put stuff online about what voltage you need now a lot of people have come to me since i've been doing my videos because a 3.8 gigs overclock i'm using voltage in the region of 1.368 um, or 1.367 i think is the voltage that i'm using a lot of people are saying i've got i'm running it at lower voltage i'm gaming and i'm only getting 55 degrees i then go back to them and said well have you stress tested it because although you're gaming what you have to realize about when you're gaming is apart from in doom it's the only game i've tested it's hardly using any of the cores whatsoever so you're not actually maxing it out so that's why when a lot of people have come to me and said they're only using 1.3 volts i can say yeah i can understand that but that's because you're gaming when you're running a full stress test when i'm video editing i definitely need higher voltage so what sort of voltage do we need then well we want to we want to be using voltage between 1.35 and 1.4 that seems to be the overclocks the, the voltage that most people are using for overclocks to hit in anywhere between like 3.8 and 4.1 gigahertz now normally what you do is just set the voltage in here you'd boot it and see if it works now we don't really get the option to do that here what we have is offset mode now when you come down here you can see it so you can see we've got plus or minus for what your offset is so we want plus and then what you have is a cpu offset voltage now this is a bit weird one thing don't use this core voltage as a base you don't want to be using that. What you need to do is have a little read down here. And here you can see max CPU voltage is 1.387 volts. That's the max voltage you can set. To set it at its max, you need to add 0.2 volts to it. Now, I don't need to quite go to that high. So what I'm going to show you is, is just a little thing that you can use. is just a base to get you to some voltage. So, for example, if you put in 0.16... So you get 0.1625. As you can see here, once I boot it back into the system with AI, um, with the AI suite, when you go to the TPU section, we're running at 1.35 volts. That would be a perfect voltage for anyone using a stock cooler, maybe looking for a 3.5 to 3.7 gigahertz overclock. Well, what about my overclock then? Well, my overclock is actually set to 0.18. So here you can see again in the AI suite, that gets me to my 1.368 volts. But what about if you want to go higher? Like I said, I'm quite happy using 3.8 gigahertz. I don't want to push the board. Well, as we know, a lot of people, to get your 4 gigahertz, you need to be using more than 1.38 volts. So what you want to do is, once we've got all this set, is go to the Digi Plus VRAM. You then want to change your CPU load line calibration to extreme. Now, when it's set to extreme... As you can see here, again, in AI Suite, we're getting a voltage of over 1.4. So that should help you overclock your processor to maybe on a Ryzen 1700 to 4 gigahertz. Although that's not guaranteed. A lot of processors are topping out at about 3.9 or 3.8. So anyway, I hope that's enough um, for me to show you today on sort of some basic overclocking. When you're done with all of that, again, as I mentioned earlier, you want to just save it to a profile. I'm just going to go load from profile because that's my profile. Save changes, exit, and there we go. There's my 3.8 gigahertz overclock. Well, I'm going to be coming back with a video very soon of um, all the memory and the RAM and stuff, um, and hopefully I can get over this cold because it's been doing my head in. Um, so if you like the video, tell me why. If you don't like it, tell me why, and I'll see you all really soon.